You were based in Andorra, not bad. Yeah, not bad, not bad. I still miss the, I still miss the old, you know, the green grass. <laughs> um, I, I love it in Andorra. The drivers, I think, thirty percent of the MotoGP field live in in, uh, in Andorra, so it's a it's a high octane country. Um, I've got the best of both worlds. I'm learning to ski at the moment. Uh, How's I that going? Uh, it's tricky. The paddies <laughs> and, and the snow wouldn't be the May West, I'd say. But, um, I'm learning, uh, you know, and, and then in the summertime you've got beautiful, you know, uh, golden sunshine nearly all summer long and. Warm temperatures is perfect for me for training, so I, I love it. Come back here as often as I can, uh, but I have to say it, it does feel like home much me. And just out of interest, do you get that same buzz of taking to the slopes in Andorra as you do, say, being out there in rallycross car, or are you still very much, once you're in the car, nothing can come close to that? <laughs> to be honest with you, the speed I'm going on the slopes now, I have the two skis <laughs> welded like this, and I'm doing about two miles an hour going down, so maybe ask me again, in, I was going to say six months, maybe six years' time I might be after improving a small bit, uh, but I, I enjoy it, and it's a great way of getting fit as well, and uh, we can do ski mo as well, which is where you put the put the uh, rubber ends onto the skis, and you can actually climb up as well, so I use it for, for training, so... Uh, not quite the same with Jordan and Russia's uh, rallying, but uh, maybe, maybe in the future. Desperately sad stuff. It was owned in conversation with Craig Breen from a couple of years ago. He had uh, joined us in OTBM over the years to talk about where he was at in his career and um, desperately sad news with his passing and we wanted to mark it and to do that I'm delighted to say we're joined on the line in sad circumstances by Art McCarrick who's the sporting manager at Motorsport Ireland. Art, thanks a lot for taking the call this morning. Just when you watch back the video, it uh, just hammers home what a tragic event that occurred yesterday. Uh, it it really does, and it's hard hard to believe we're we're talking about Craig Breen in the uh, in the past tense. Um, you know, he was our most successful, most talented, most decorated driver, um, and uh, you know the the whole motorsport community is is really struggling to <clears throat> to come to terms with the news we got yesterday. And a guy that, um, like I, you know, I think there's an acceptance. There is an acceptance from people who compete in a sport like that about the dangers that are involved. But just the event itself is uh, equally so unthinkable. It, it it really is, and you know, look at the the Croatian authorities and Hyundai will have to <clears throat> do the necessary in, investigations there. And, and really, at the moment, you know, um, our our thoughts and concerns are with, are with Greg's immediate family and, and his co-driver James Fulton, um, who thankfully um, got out of yesterday's accident unscathed, and um, just the sheer uh, outpouring of of grief um, among the Irish motorsport community and indeed the the wider sporting community um, has really been something to um, to behold. He was he was one of those. Uh, motorsport figures because of his, his profile he kind of um, transcended motorsport a little bit uh, people who didn't know anything about motorsport knew who he was yeah. and uh, yeah, it's a tough day Will you talk to us a little bit Art if you can about who he was as well I'm sure you would have had plenty of dealings with him over the years the little bits that we would have chatted to him about his crazy passion for motorsport across the board really lifted off the page but will you talk to us a little bit about that and about who Craig Breen was as a person Yeah um, so he, uh, his father was a, a former national rally champion. So Craig grew up around the uh, the sport, and he started go karting from the age of eight. Um, and after two years, he was the, the national junior champion. Um, and in two thousand and eight, he decided he would leave the karting, which was very talented with him. Once he was old enough to get his his road traffic license, he he went rallying, and his. <clears throat> Tra- trajectory really from 2008 was was nothing short of spectacular. His first full year rally in 2009, he was the Irish Junior Champion, Irish and UK Fiesta Sporting Champion, Billy Coleman Award winner, the the youngest person ever to win that. The following year, he won the Pirelli Star Driver Global Shootout. 2011, he won the Academy section of the World Rally Championship that got a half a million euro prize at the time. Uh, 2012, he won the second tier of the World Rally Championship. And since 2013, effectively, he had been a full factory driver um, with Peugeot first, then with Citroën, then with Hyundai, then with Ford, and, and tragically uh, back to Hyundai, where, where it's all finished up. Um, and his achievements, we'll talk about the, the man in, in a second. He won five European Rally Championship events. Um, had nine World Rally Championship podium finishes, including six second place finishes. Um, no Irish driver has ever got close to that. 
Um, and uh, I'm not sure they, they, they ever will. He was very close to getting on the, the top step of the podium. Indeed, he was, he was strongly fancied in, in Croatia. He had a, a very good result in Sweden on, on his first round of the championship this year mm. with, with the new co-drivers. Um, but he loved um, motorsport um, and uh, loved, <coughs> loved helping um, others kind of try and get the the opportunities that that he got. Um, in fact, only this year, he sponsored the um, the Junior One Thousand uh, Rally Championship, which takes place in in the forest um, for drivers aged fourteen to eighteen, and he put up. Um, 10,000 euro sponsorship money um, and as recently as three days ago Tuesday he attended um, uh, a tuition day for those drivers 18 young drivers uh, in Galway and um, they didn't they didn't even know he was going to come and uh, wow you know, it was just he, uh, unbelievable he was clearly very, very humble, Art, and, and, and such a role model to those young drivers. I even saw some uh, Instagram posts yesterday from the likes of Alex Dunn and, and, and even James Rowe, who's over in Indy, um, who clearly looked up to him. A lot of the Irish young drivers, in fact, all of the Irish young drivers did. Um, and, and even that interview with Owen that we played beforehand, like if you watch the full thing back on YouTube, you'll see he talks about his demons as well and some of the dark days over the last you know number of years and, and, and dealing with those and speaking to family and, and professional help as well. Um, so so it, he was clearly quite comfortable in that role model role and knew that maybe speaking out about the likes of that was was crucially important as well. Yeah, um, you know, so many, and, and you probably speak to them a lot, um, so many <clears throat> top sports people there. <clears throat> they can kind of be a bit robotic in their answers sometimes or uh, a little bit guarded. Um, that certainly wasn't, uh, that certainly wasn't Craig. Um, he... Uh, was always uh, very honest, but possibly sometimes um, uh, too honest. But it, it was always um, he, he couldn't hide who he was, and um, he was, you know, as, as we said yesterday in our statement, he was a he was a world class driver, but he was a, a world class person as well. Mm. Clearly, the the um, and if anyone has seen Craig's Twitter bio, you'll have seen reference to to Jaffa and. Gareth Roberts is a is a Welsh co driver known by uh, the, the name Jaffa, and I think it was the twenty twelve that that um, Gareth Roberts was tragically killed in a in an eerily similar crash um, uh, to, to to yesterday's, and that that was clearly something that that had affected Craig quite quite deeply, Art as well. It was, and he spoke uh, very openly about that. I think it was that accident was was June um, twenty twelve, but I suppose if you wanted. Um, uh, a, a measure of the man. Um, the first event Craig did after that accident was a, a small, a small rally in Wales, and um, the the person who sat in as the co-driver was um, Gareth Roberts' brother, and um, it was um, it really was um, just a, a measure of the man that um, you know we all. We all know the risks in the sport, but uh, it doesn't make it any easier on, on days like this. But the uh, the fact that um, you know the, um, Gareth Roberts' brother um, sat in with Craig for his first event back um, that speaks volumes about uh, who he was and um, how he was respected. That speaks volumes, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, world class, as you said, Art, uh, world class driver, and world class individual as well. And I was struck. Absolutely. You mentioned uh, Rally Sweden earlier. I was struck by mm. his words. Now that the clip was uh, doing the rounds yesterday, um, where he had said it's, a, it's an incredibly tough sport to get a seat in, and he was very open again about his ups and downs in relation to that. And he was obviously back and felt back and uh, had said, "Don't let anyone put you down. Only you know your true potential." And um, mm. There, you know, there are words that that ring heavy today. Uh, absolutely, you know, there's there's less seats um, at the top of the World Rally Championship than there is in, in Formula One. You know, there's only three teams, and um, not all of them run three cars. Um, Craig had done the deal with Hyundai this year to to share a third car with um, uh, Danny Sardo, and the hope was that that would turn into another full time seat um, next year. And um, he worked every second of every day to, to get back to the top. In fact, <clears throat> um, 
20, late 2018, his, his contract with Citroën had finished. He didn't have a, a factory driving himself and his co-driver at the time, Paul Nagel, um, pulled together um, sponsorship to do the, the Irish Tarmac Championship at home, which was always a dream of Greg's to, to do, but um, he realised that he only had a, a finite amount of time at the top level of the sport, so it was something he never really chased, but um, he annihilated um, the opposition here at home in 2019 and, and halfway through that season um, Hyundai came knocking and um, that was the, the restart of, of his career at the at the top level and um, he, um, like I say, he was incredibly open about um, the difficulties and, and the pressures of being um, uh, not only a professional top flight driver but the, the pressures of being a, a top flight sports person um, you know, he divided his time between the continent and Ireland, and would come back as much as as much as he could. Um, and even th- this year, you know, he competed competed in two events in Ireland in 2023, the, the West Cork Rally, not that long ago, St Patrick's Weekend, and a, a very small navigation trial event in uh, County Cavan, uh, which would be the home club of um, James Fulton, his his co driver. Um, just to try and you know build that relationship up with with James as a as a new co-driver for this year, and um, he um, he did so much outside of the sport too. You know, he was an ambassador for the the Road Safety Authority in conjunction with our, with ourselves for you know, promoting to keep the race in its place message. And um, you know, I was I was just listening earlier on this morning those um, kids talking about. Um, Playing GAA in front of Joe Biden and, and the buzz it gave them, I just couldn't stop thinking of of uh, Tuesday had just gone, where you know he wrapped up to the the tuition day, where um, his young drivers had an idea he was going to turn up, and um, it was uh, right up until the the, the very end. He uh, the greatest, uh, one of the greatest advocates for <clears throat> for Irish motorsport you'd ever meet. I, th- I think that's so important what you said there, Art, but the fact that he never he never forgot his roots. I know he was a Waterford man, and, and you listed off his achievements there earlier, and, and, and as, as you say, it'll be very difficult for any Irish driver ever to, to uh, match them, never mind surpass them. But the fact that he came home, as you said, to, to you know Irish tarmac championships, whether it be in, in Killarney or Donegal or wherever, or Cavan, as you say as well, that also speaks volumes, because he didn't have to come home for those events. No, but um, he wanted to, and... Um he never um <clears throat> he never forgot what made him love the sport and that was you know the Irish uh, events here and um he knew that uh that that's what made him made him happiest i suppose when he was <clears throat> competing here it was stress free competing i suppose uh, at the at the level he's at but um, he made a conscious effort in, in recent years especially to to come back here and and compete or even even spectate you know, you, you you could see his head sticking out of a hedge at, at any corner of the country. Um, he uh, he got back whenever he could, and um, the fact then in later years he started giving back and, and mentoring young drivers um, was just a, a whole a whole different um, element because he was lucky enough he found himself in in the position to do that, and um, yeah, he didn't have to. No one asked him to. Um, it was just something uh, he uh, wanted to do, and um, it <laughs> he leaves behind um, uh, an amazing legacy, albeit uh, tragically cut short. Yeah, well, our thoughts are with the Motorsport Ireland community today, Art, and with his family and his friends, of course, as well. It's mm-hmm. often used, and we didn't want to let it pass without uh, reflecting on who who he was. So we, I know it was tough uh, for you to do that over the last ten or fifty minutes, but we appreciate it. Thanks, William. No, absolutely. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks a lot, Art McCarrick there at uh, Motorsport Ireland.